big hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. It's been in the works for a year now and Nirvik Singh, Chairman and CEO of Grey Asia Pacific, finally decided to make the move. A change in Grey India's leadership. Sunil Lula was named CEO of Grey India and he makes a comeback to advertising after nearly two decades. WPP-owned Grey is a mid-sized agency in India and does not share the creative reputation it ought to when compared to its international counterparts. Grey Global, on the other hand, today is a cutting-edge creative force and its comeback story is a story in itself. In India, however, the story is not that compelling. So will Sunil Lula deliver for Grey India and get the agency back on the creative map? Well, I caught up with Nirvik and Sunil to figure out just that. Take it away. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, both Nirvik and Sunil. Uh, first off, okay. many congratulations, uh, Sunil, on you know getting this... Uh, new uh, assignment and coming back actually to the advertising industry yes. and uh, Nirvik, good to actually be uh, meeting you in India. Thank you. So uh, first question uh, to you really, um, you know, this was in the works for a while that you're going to get in a new CEO. Of course, you've been denying it for a while as well. Uh, what finally uh, made you take that decision and, you know, get uh, Sunil Lola to do what he's supposed to do at Grey India? So let me just put this in perspective when you say that there's been a rumor for a while. Jishnu, who's been here for seven years, has been in conversation with me for very long saying he'd wanted to do something else, right? And uh, it was, therefore, it's taken time and I think he was kind enough to stay back till we found somebody. But that's really what, what transpired. And then we've spent a lot of time thinking about what kind of person we want to bring to lead Gray in India. And when we looked around, we also felt that given how our industry is changing, how rapidly it's changing, and it's really now gone back to being, you know, with so much fragmentation. And we were really lucky that, you know, we managed to reach out and, and convince this gentleman to come on board. He has digital experience, advertising experience, being a client on the marketer side, more recently in the TV business. So, really, Sunil for us ticked up a lot of the boxes. Coming to you, um, Sunil, you know, you've been a veteran of sorts and you've, you know, uh, dabbled so much within the industry but mostly broadcast and you've been a client forever now for the longest time for you to come back into advertising and wear the subservient hat because somewhere there is a change of attitude that has to happen because so far you've been media client all of that how do you think you're going to you know do that whole mindset adjustment I think for for me personally this is a big opportunity and as Nirvik started by talking about I think there's a lot of change happening with consumers sure they have many choices today in every category. So which means there's a lot of growth possible for businesses. And for advertising to fuel that growth is today an even bigger opportunity and a bigger reality. Right. The convergence of the potential that technology brings to communication so it can change to content and really become a powerful tool is what the opportunity is about. And I think that's going to make it very exciting. I think advertising keeps you young and there can't be a better recipe than that. Uh, Nirvik, uh, what is the mandate that you have for Grey India and what have you told Sunil that needs to be, needs to get done in the short and medium term? Well, obviously there are simple things like growth, uh, which are fairly obvious, but I think we are at an interesting inflection point in the industry and I think while some agencies have donned the creative mantle and some have donned the efficacy mantle and some have tried to do both, sure. I think there is nobody in, in India that's currently saying we can marry creativity, storytelling, and technology better than anybody else. And I think, to me, that's the exciting aspect of, you know, can we take the agency beyond a traditional advertising agency? So really, I think the issue is really for Sunil to see whether he wants to go in that direction, whether he can take it in that direction. I think, you know, agencies are integrated, but today, when, you, when there's so much fragmentation, how do you deliver actually against that fragmentation? And of course, we want our creative reputation to go back to being really, really solid. So I think those are some of the sort of immediate short and medium term challenges. You know, I'd like you to put on your APAC hat and tell me, how is APAC performing for Grey? Well, Asia's been very, APAC has been doing really well. I think we've grown the business probably fourfold in the last six years, six and a half years. So we have grown hugely. Um, I think we've, on various benchmarks, we have been... WPP's best performing agency in Asia Pacific across some benchmarks. Uh, we've seen rapid growth in China. We've seen, you know, Singapore's one agency of the year, China's one greater agency of the year. We're in a good place in Japan. Um, we're probably one of the few Western agencies that is really well in Japan. Um, and again, in Korea, we're looking at some 
really interesting technology companies. So there's a lot going on in the region, but I think it's fair to say that we've done fairly well. When you talk about you know, APAC and how it's done in the last six, six years or so, if you can name one market within APAC that has been your star market, which one would it be? I think China. China has done exceptionally well. I think we were struggling in China till about two years ago, um, and or maybe two and a half years ago now. And we again we had a leadership change. We brought in T H Peng as our Greater China Chairman and CEO, and we've grown substantially in Greater China, um, organically, and through acquisitions. Uh, now that you've established that you're doing well in APAC, and you know China is your lead market, my next question is really how much is India contributing to your entire APAC pie? Well, currently it, it currently it does contribute close to ten percent, so it's not a small it's not a small uh, small player. Would I, I like ask you this question only because you know uh, India is under a lot of pressure to perform. Uh, you, you know, I know for a fact that almost all agencies, uh, when you get uh, when you have depressed uh, markets, let's say Europe is depressed and America is depressed, the pressure here is even more for India to perform. Given so it's not that, just India; it's across Asia. Yeah. So, I'm, but I'm talking specifically about India. And when I look at all WPP agencies, creative agencies specifically, right, and I look at their contribution uh, towards APAC, it's significantly larger compared. Leaving out, <clears throat> let's say, Rediffusion Vinar, because th that's a bit complicated at the moment. But leaving them aside, and you look at all the all the creative agencies, um, you know, it seems like Gray's India contribution is lesser than the rest of the pack. There are two ways of looking at that, right? Yeah. So one way of looking at it is to say the India contribution of the other agency is higher, which by definition means the other Asia Pacific agencies are slower, Fair are lower, right? Yeah. So in our case, I could flip that argument by saying, well, you know what, we have very strong operation in <coughs> all across Asia. You don't want a place where you know, somebody's contributing 50% and really has a terrible year, then it impacts everybody, as opposed to if the, if the portfolio is evenly divided, it's fine. So that's one way of looking at it. I also think that the other WPP agencies have a huge historical and legacy advantage, number one. Number two, don't forget that our big global clients only came into India 10 years ago, okay. right? The Unilevers of the world have been here forever and forever. And for many, many years, they've been India's largest advertisers. Yeah. Right, and two of our sister companies within WPP have very large Unilever portfolios, and they have very large, you know, IBM portfolios and very large Ford portfolios. Right now, at the end of the day, Gray hasn't had the benefit of a lot of its international clients. Mm -hmm. Right, we're beginning to see some of it now. So, you know, even that ratio, which is how much of multinational versus local clients, I hope that will change. Okay, India does still contribute 10, 15, 10 to 12 percent of our Asia Pacific total. Would I like it to be 20%? The answer is yes. Would I like China to be 25 and you know 28%? In, in, in my head, going forward, I would like China and India, obviously, to be the lead markets mm -hmm. for Asia Pacific from a contribution point of view. And then look at the next 11. Now, on the other hand, as I said, we have a balanced portfolio. So while a lot of people don't have a, a decent Japan operation, we have a fabulous Japanese operation. So, you know, it's a function of how you look at the portfolio across different countries. So I'm glad you brought about the fact that, you know, Gray is doing so well globally. And it, it has. And it's, you know, its comeback is astounding. It's, it's a story by itself. So if you can be, not wear your Gray cap and, you know, be, uh, look at it, give an outward view and say that why has Gray not got its share of its limelight in India? When you say whether Gray's got a share of glory, that I don't know about, primarily because this is an agency that has won the Digital Agency of the Year twice in the last four years. Um, they won two Can Go Lions and Proctor year on year. They, I think they came second at the Curious Awards. I think they won the Grand Prix at the Goa Fest. Maybe they're just shy people who don't like talking to media. Maybe. Maybe that, that's something that needs to be resolved. But the fact of the matter is, it is, in the last four years, has been named Digital Agency of the Year twice. Now, have we gone and thumbed the chest? Maybe we haven't. Maybe we should, right? In today's day of dog eat dog and, you know, and wanting to prove how, how good we are. But yes, I, I think maybe we've been shy of, of, of say, telling our story properly. But there is a story to tell, right? There is a story to tell. And we have a new storyteller. Are you looking to revitalize this agency by getting in some new talent or are you going so to... So one of the things that I'm talking with, with all our teams across oh. is a very simple thing that I've actually learned is I say breathe joy, right? Just two words. What it means is, and you know the basic principles of breathing in yoga, is if you breathe well, you live happier, you listen more, you speak less, you do more, and you sleep less, right? <laughs> So breathe joy is about that, that if you can actually train your body and your mind to be happy, to be participative, 
and to be inclusive, then I think you will create joy wherever you go. That is the mantra I want to follow. Sunil, you can become a spiritual guru. There you are. There you are. Thank you. Now repeat this 200 times. My next job is ready. <laughs> On another note, you know, you, you, you're a regular at Cannes. So, and you also look at other uh, markets within APAC. Uh, if I had to objectively ask you, and please be candid, uh, I request you, uh, how would you uh, rank India in terms of its creativity and how do you think it, it, it stands vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world? I think different markets in Asia Pacific are beginning to, to stand for different things. So if you look at design, for example, clearly Japan hmm. is leading on that front. Sure. Okay. Right? If you look at integration, or you look at completely 360 campaigns, I see Australia doing a fantastic job, whether it's been you know, just TAC, which has won so many awards, or any of the other campaigns that I won from Australia. But even last year, you know, 14 Ways to Die, they had everything thought through, right? right? Uh, is it that because we are so um, okay telling the world because we're, you know, we're different, we're nuanced, that that's our defense to actually, uh, you know, put out work that will resonate with the rest of the world? I think, honestly, I think some more sort of, I think some, some introspection we should do as an industry to see. And I think to Sunil's point, I think, you know, maybe we've got too defensive, maybe we've got too cynical. I think, you know, I think it requires someone or some I think also people, in Vivek, you know, you know, I think our to evolution, come together to bring it together. The evolution of our markets is lagging behind the evolution of many other markets. So the, even marketeers in India have got many fundamental things to still demonstrate. You know, we still have to explain to people why a packaged water is better or why you must wash your hands. So we still have very many basic things to do. And we are a nation which, for almost 500 million people, you are still dealing with, from a Maslow's point of view, the first set of needs. Sure. Then your evolution cannot be compared by the premium end right at the top. Right? So I think that we've also got that as a challenge as a marketing community over here. Yeah. And but I think, therefore, if you, if you look at that yardstick, actually we're doing extremely well. But I, 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 to take your point forward, I, I think, Sanali, I think what you, what you said is right. We need to push ourselves to get there. I think, you know, whether, whether, we, whether we're exposing our people enough, I don't know, as an industry, to that sort of stuff. Uh, all the very best, Sanil. Thank you. And, Thank you, Sanali. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely uh, to be catching up with you in India. Thank you. And uh, I hope this duo goes a long, uh, long, well, long way. Thank you so much. And Gray gets uh, the due that it deserves. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us.